Hey everybody, before we jump into my Gandiva deck, I'm gonna real quickly talk about 50 Cards, which is our sponsor for this video. So if you haven't heard of 50 Cards, it's an online website to pick up play mats, decks, singles, whatever you need to update your deck for Shadowverse and Vanguard. So there's bundles as well, so you can get full play sets of any card you need or any craft or nation. Everything you need to update your deck is right there for you at 50 cards. And be sure to get 5% off when you use code Nexus at checkout. And without further ado, let's jump into the deck profile. All right, guys, jumping to the deck profile, got our ride line, which is the typical Gandiva ride line. The grade one makes it so that you can ride into the grade two for free. If your opponent has one or less rear guards, if they have more, you call this to a rear guard circle. The grade two makes Gandiva's actability free for that turn. And then Gandiva has a lot of stuff going on. So every time retire rear guard, you bind a card from your drop face down. For every face down card in your bind zone, your front row gets 2K. And if you have five or more, Gandiva gains a crit. Actability, counterblast one. You choose up to five of your opponent's rear guards of different grades. Then you reveal the top five. If you revealed any cards that have the same grade as any of the chosen cards, you retire the chosen cards. If you retired one or less of those chosen cards, you can draw a card, bind a card face down. So you're binding a bunch, you're drawing cards, your Gandiva's gonna get a crit really easily because you only need to have five cards face down in the bind zone. So crit pressure, big front row because it's 2K for every face down bound card. So you got five, that's 10K. That's that's honestly super easy to do. Gandiva is such a good deck. Main deck grade threes. We got our three Gandivas for a Persona Ride. So wanna make sure we keep that consistent. Then we're running four copies of a new card, which is Bravaldin. Bravaldin's really busted because what it does is when it's revealed from your deck for the cost of Gandiva, it's regarded as a grade one and a grade two. So you're basically guaranteed to blow up most things on the board. The second ability is when it attacks a vanguard. If you have a Gandiva vanguard, you can bind a card from your hand face down, choose one of your punts rear guards and retire it. If there was nothing to retire, you draw a card and then this gets 5k. So it's just making your uh, bind zone fatter, makes your hand even out and it gets an extra five, which is super easy. So this card is just really good and really aggressive. Then we got four copies of the card that's probably gonna get hit pretty soon because it got hit to one in Japan. We have four copies of Sturgna. Sturgna is just straight up busted. Uh, when it's placed on rear, if you have Vanguard Gandiva, you soul blast one, bind another rear guard, choose from your opponent's rear guards and retire it. If you did not retire something, you draw, and then you can put a card from your drop zone face down in your bind zone. So the fact that you're soul blasting to fill a drop, you bind a rear guard for cost, and then you bind another card after you, you, know, you do or do not retire, this card alone just accelerates your bind zone so much. So since it's legal now to run full playset, I'm running full playset. So it's waiting to see if we get hit with that ban list or not. Now we're moving on to grade twos. Uh, arguably, the, I would say this card is like arguably better than Sturgna just because of the multi attack. I really like this card a lot. What it does is when this attacks, or sorry, when your Vanguard of Gandiva in the same attacks, a grade three or greater Vanguard, you count blast one, bind this card face down, look at top five, call a grade three or less to rear, and shuffle your deck. So multi-attacking, which is nice, and this helps fill up your bind zone. Then lastly for grade twos, we got three copies of Rugnant, uh, Rugint. Uh, it's very simple, it's just on place, count blast one, choose an opponent's rear guard, retire it, and if you did not retire anything, you choose a card from your bind zone, or from your drop zone, bind it, and then you draw a card. So anytime you're opponent's board is empty, you're still drawing cards and binding stuff, which is easy. But we basically dropped this down for Brevaldin, so it makes sense, just to make sense, you know, compensate for the counter blast. Speaking of making up for counter blasts, we're going into grade ones. I'm running four copies of Bukin, or Busin, however it's pronounced. Uh, this card is your counter charge engine, and I've constantly had issues with counter blasts when I've been playing with this deck, so I just max it up to four. What this does is this, if this is in the back row and you have a Vanguard Gandiva in its name attacks, you basically just bind this because all you need to do is have a minimum of three or more in your bind zone for the cost, which is free. Bind this face down, counter charge one. So you can just have a two back rows of this, counter charge two, which is easy. And my favorite thing to do is to put these two in a column. You swing with these two first, your Gandiva Vanguard attacks, you bind this with the Counter Blast, you bind this to Counter Charge, which repays its cost, or vice versa. You got no Counter Blast, you bind this first to Counter Charge, and then you bind this for its skill afterwards. So 
these two match made in heaven. So then for the rest of our normal unit grade ones, we are running our three PGs just because we are running the one Elementaria. So pretty simple grade one lineup. Trigger units also very simple, Drag Veda. This is like a no brainer. Every Dragon Empire deck is just gonna run Drag Veda. Like why wouldn't you want a restanding Vanguard? Then we have our crits. We got our four Burning Flail. We got our four Blaze Maiden zone, zone, just so we can have our eight crit because crit wins games. Uh, I'm running draw triggers just because um, I want to see cards in hand so that I can, you know, bind stuff and find the right targets. I do like the draw triggers a lot, and I feel like you go so hard with this deck that the fear of deck out isn't really there. So I do like the draws. Then I'm running three vanilla heals, and I am running the one Cure Flare Draco Kid. This is mostly for the quote unquote mirror match. Cause like every other matchup, it, you get so much hand that the minus five shield doesn't really matter that much. But in the Gandiva matchup, if you do see this early, being able to throw this down, you know, for the shield is nice. So, you know, it's all hypothetical, but if you want to stick with the vanilla heals, it's pretty much the same thing. Lastly, we're going into our order cards. We've got our four best harvest. Uh, I got the two and two, but it's the same card. Basically, you choose your Vanguard. For the turn, it gets uh, red text. When your opponent's rearguard is retired during the main phase, you draw a card. And since you're retiring so many cards, just drawing a bunch is insane for this deck. So I'm running it at four. Feel free to drop it down to three if you don't feel like four is necessary. Maybe bump up, uh, you know, another grade two or such, whatever you want to do with your ratios. But I like this for now. And last is our Elementaria for our basically a fourth PG that gets around garbage trick. It's free against grade fours. And since Bastion Accord is pretty popular right now, uh, this is actually seeing a lot more play in terms of like it being a free PG. Um, because if your opponent has triple drive, you just boop, play it and it's, you don't have to discard. So uh, that is it for the deck profile. Thank you guys for uh, watching. I know that the changes in this deck were very, very minute. And by minute, I mean, it's literally just this one card but I just wanted to show you guys what I've been playing with and you know how psyched I am the fact that you know we're getting new cards and set 12 is still fun in my opinion and set 13 being on the way is just kind of adding more hype to the meta so but if you're interested in playing Gandiva and you know you're kind of new to the build this is a pretty cookie cutter deck this is pretty much what most Gandiva decks are looking like so just to give you an idea. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to check out 50 cards to get that discount with code Nexus and to pick up some playset bundles and whatever singles and sleeves and deck boxes you may need. And with that being said, my name is Richard and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.